A quick note to any parents out there. The following episode is clean, but it does briefly hint at some adult themes. We did our best to edit it in a way that would go over the heads of younger listeners. But if you want to completely avoid that because you have little ears around you, you might want to come back later. Okay, here we go. You're listening to 20,000 Hertz. When I was a kid in the late 80s and early 90s, I looked like a character straight out of Stranger Things. Poofy brown hair, thick plastic-rimmed glasses, tight white pants, and the most generic high tops you could imagine. Think Napoleon Dynamite, but less cool. Now, there's a couple of things you should know about 80s Dallas. The first is that I was obsessed with professional wrestling. Hulk Hogan, he dropped the big leg on him. He's now for the cover of the leg one, two, he got him. The second is that when I thought my parents were away, I'd sneakily watch things like Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, and especially Tales from the Crypt. That's the one with the Crypt Keeper, that creepy skeleton puppet guy. As a kid, I watched a lot of TV. And back then, it meant a lot of commercials. But in every commercial break, there was one thing that you were almost guaranteed to see advertised. A 900 number. These were phone numbers that anyone could call into. You'd call and pay by the minute to hear all kinds of wacky, pre-recorded messages. If you wanted to hear from Santa Claus, you could. Ho, ho, Santa here. Call 1-900-660-6666, and I'll tell you a different Christmas story every day. New Kids on the Block, MC Hammer, Corey Feldman, anyone who was anyone had a 900 number. Even the Crypt Keeper. This is no game of chance, Crypt, mate. Call 1-900-246-CRYPT and plunge into my hallowed halls of horror. There was also one for Hulkamaniacs like me. Hey dudes, Hulk Hogan's running wild on the WCW, and I want to tell you about it right now. Call the Hulk Hogan hotline, 1-900-737-HULK. But it wasn't just celebrities. You could also get the weather forecast, hints for video games, and even the inside scoop about UFOs. The UFO hotline, your phone number to the biggest cover-up ever. This may be the most shocking phone call you'll ever make. And that's just scratching the surface of how weird things got. Cute little dog you've got there. In a previous life, he could have been George Washington. Reincarnation. What human being was your pet in a previous lifetime? Master reincarnationist E. David Scott will tell you when you call this number. Now, if you're on the younger side, all of this might sound completely bizarre to you. But anyone my age or older will definitely remember the 900 number craze. And that includes plenty of our listeners. When I think of 1-900 numbers, I think of late night Saturday television. You'd see 900 number ads constantly. 1-900-490-2 a call. When I was younger, like six or seven, I heard about a 900 number, probably on a cartoon, and I called it. It was a grandmother-type voice who would read stories, children's stories. Call a Snow White story phone now. She's just waiting to hear from you. When my brother and I were about 10 or 11, we saw the commercial to uh, call and hear Freddy Krueger tell us a scary story. Freddy Krueger is on your phone. Dial this number now. I've got some tales to tell. Freddy's favorite bedtime stories. (laughs) Dead time stories. I actually got kicked out of a Sunday school class because I shared the Freddy Krueger 900 number with all of my classmates in there, and they all tried it and got in trouble by their parents. $2 $2 the first minute, 45 cents each additional minute. Children, get your parents' permission before you dial. And it's not just our listeners who remember, because there's someone else coming with me on this hoverboard ride of nostalgia. 20K producer and host of the podcast Curious State, Doug Frazier.
All right. Well, uh, yeah, let's dive into this thing. Cool, cool. Okay, so when you think of 900 numbers, what's the first image that pops into your mind? Sitting in my grandmother's trailer out in the country on a hill in northwest Arkansas, they had a back room, and I, I remember there was a phone there in that room. Anytime I ever called a 900 number, it was under the influence of the cousins that were like four, five, six years older than me who would be like, why don't we call that? Yeah, come on. Don't be a wimp. <laughs> So the ones that I know I for sure called were like the wrestling and like the Crypt Keeper, probably nudged by the older kids. Because like the 14-year-olds knew the Crypt Keeper was, you know, a, pu- a giant puppet. I did not know that when I was like nine. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh my God, shut up. It's good to have you back, you horror-hungry humans. And he had this real high-pitched voice, and I thought it was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> When you called those numbers, after you actually had the call, was it worth it? It was thrilling. It felt like I was really talking to this person or this character. And so, yeah, I felt like it was worth it. 900 numbers were originally launched in the early 70s. The idea was that they could be used for numbers that expected a lot of calls, like public information hotlines. Thank you for calling the National Sidewalk Safety Hotline. Press 1 to report a problem with your local sidewalk. Press 2 to hear those options again. But it wasn't until 1977 that a 900 number came to national attention. That was when Jimmy Carter took part in a live call-in show hosted by Walter Cronkite. Mrs. Opal Dehart is on the phone, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Ms. Dehart. Uh, Good afternoon, President Carter. I'm glad to have the opportunity to speak with you. Okay, so it wasn't as exciting as the Hulk Hogan hotline, but it was seriously popular. More than 9 million people called in, although only 42 of them actually got to speak with the president. In fact, it was so popular that it was turned into a sketch on Saturday Night Live. It starred Dan Aykroyd as President Carter and Bill Murray as Walter Cronkite. Our next call comes from a man who calls himself Dr. Midnight. Hello, Dr. Midnight. Pretty soon, phone companies realized they could turn these calls into cash. So they decided to run another national call-in. And again, Jimmy Carter was involved. As I've studied the record between myself and Governor Reagan, I've been impressed with the stark differences that exist between us. Back in the early 80s, there was a vote line during the Carter-Reagan debates. That's Bob Bentz. Today, Bob's the president of Advanced Telecom Services, But back then, he was a 900 number pioneer. People phoned in and for 35 cents, they got to vote for whether they thought Carter or Reagan had won the political debates. 700,000 people called in to cast their vote, or at least that's how many got through. The rest just heard this. Despite the technical issues, people were wowed by the technology they could actually interact with the television show in front of them. Once the public got a taste, there was no turning back. At first, only select organizations were allowed to have a 900 number, but that all changed in 1987. That's when AT&T decided, okay, we got a pretty good thing here. We're going to roll this out to the masses and let as many people as possible get a 900 number. And that's when I said, this could be very lucrative. I think we want to start our own business. So Bob partnered with two of his friends and got things rolling. We had to invest in quite a bit of telecom equipment. We were just three guys who started a business who took second mortgages on our homes. We were all still in our 20s they got the funds they needed and started experimenting with different kinds of 900 numbers. Early on, they had a lot of success with sports lines, where people could call in and get the latest scores and updates about their favorite team. The beauty of sports was that there's always new information. So began a cultural and technological revolution. 900 numbers offered news, weather, and traffic reports instantly. At the time, it was mind-blowing. 
something about 900 numbers were, it was thrilling, it was just 80s awesome, and just a great moment in phone history. Before long, 900 numbers were a big business. The calls would just roll in one after another after another. That's David Wood. David spent more than two decades in the 900 number business. Our company provided the hardware and the software to make it all work. And most importantly, it provided what we call content. So it provided the people at the other end of the line. Soon enough, the money was rolling in because people like David knew the secret sauce. The key to 900 was keeping people on the line as long as possible. The longer you kept the people on the line, the more the call was. So you always wanted to get them sucked in either through menu selections. Please press one for information, two to make a booking, three for customer services. Or just things to slowly build up the time. Please enter your five-digit zip code. You entered 05830. If that's correct, press 1. If that, thanks. One of the 900 numbers David set up was with the certified double platinum band, Nelson. When you called in, the band members had some juicy info worth paying for. Eh, kind of. Hi, this is Gunnar. Hi, this is Matthew. We're going to be performing in Toledo next Tuesday night. Gunnar and I went out to dinner last night and we sat next to so-and-so. Fans called the Nelson line in droves. For a little while, anyway. It was a instant sensation for all of like two weeks. And then that passed, as did their career. Even though it didn't last long, the Nelson Hotline is a great example of what made these numbers so addictive. They gave you what felt like a personal connection to your favorite celebrities. All you had to do was pick up the phone and you could hear from Paula Abdul. Paula's on a rocket to stardom. Call me now and find out why. Pick up the phone. Call 1-900-909-1800. Call me now. Or hear what the Fresh Prince and DJ Jazzy Jeff were up to. You know, sometimes it's just nothing to do at home, so now you can call me and Prince on the telephone. All the inside scoop, all the hip-hop scene. Just dial the number on your TV screen. It was like an early form of social media, but decades ahead of its time. Guess what? Corey Haim and Corey Feldman are giving out their personal numbers. If you call me right now, I'll give you my private number. Um, you call that number... And you'll hear a recording, and I'll give you my personal number if you call that, and we'll rap. Celebrity 900 numbers were big business, but the biggest earners by far were the adult entertainment lines. Enjoy the fun of meeting someone new. Call 1-900-933-5000. Dreams can come true. The right woman can make all the difference. Call now. But perhaps more interesting was the dating side of the business. That's something Bob Benz and his team invested a lot of time and money in. Are you over 30 and single? You can find love and romance right here on the telephone, on the Romance Hotline. It was quite an intense program. There was a lot of work on our end, but they were extremely lucrative category. Here's how it worked. The 900 number companies would partner with local TV stations and newspapers. They'd put spots like this on TV. Hi, I'm Linda, and I live in the Valley. I'm a DJ, but would like to try my hand at acting. I enjoy roller skating, long coastal drives, the beach at night, and music. I'm looking for a man, 18 to 30, who has a good sense of humor and dark hair and green eyes. They'd also run classified ads in the local newspapers. You'd read a classified ad from a a woman and you'd say, she seems kind of cute. I think I'll call and leave her a message. So you'd call the 900 number and set up your own mailbox. Then you could send a voicemail directly to the person you saw on TV or in the newspaper. If they liked what they heard, they could send one back. 
Usually men and women would exchange three or four voicemail messages back and forth until they agreed to meet in a public place for a proper date. But fellas, there was a catch. Guys had to pay, but... Women were free because it's kind of like having a party when you're in college. If you got enough girls there, the guys are going to find it, right? So the women could take out a mailbox for free. The guys had to pay to take out a mailbox. But of all the 900 numbers, there was one that held the championship belt, thanks to dedicated fans like Dallas. There's always something new on the Hulk Hogan hotline. Call now, 1-900-737-HULK. And Bob was the person who actually created that hotline. I have a trophy in our trophy chest that from 1991 to 1994, the Hulk Hogan hotline was the single most called 900 number in the country. Call cost $1.49 per minute. Kids get parents' permission. Charges will appear on a parent's phone bill. We also had a number with Randy Macho Man Savage. And I guarantee you, Elizabeth, and anybody out there, don't bet against the Macho Man. Not this year. Oh. But when it came to the Hulkster, he was all about say your prayers and eat your vitamins. And so they'd put in messages like that. Train, say your prayers, eat your vitamins. Be true to yourself, true to your country. Be a real American. Whew. For a while, it seemed like having a 900 number was a license to print money. Hi, this is Tiffany, and I'm so excited Wait, number you could number reach number me on That was the peak, and it was hundreds of millions of dollars a year. I mean, everyone was making money, and it was fun. But just as quickly as it began, the 900 number craze ended with a crash. After the break, the thing that finally took 900 numbers down. Plus, Dallas gets a visit from an old friend. In the late 80s and the early 90s, 900 numbers were everywhere. They usually cost between $1 and $4 a minute, which they would charge to your phone bill. The idea might seem cheesy now, but at the time, it was revolutionary. All of a sudden, anyone with a landline could call in and hear from psychics, celebrities, musicians, wrestlers, and even fictional characters. I am He-Man. Call She-Ra and me at 1-900-909-2233. We'll journey to distant worlds, explore the universe, and probably battle Skeletor along the way, huh? With how much these lines charged, It's no surprise that kids like Dallas and me got in big trouble for calling 900 numbers. When our parents got the phone bell, let's just say we paid a heavy price per minute. I was not busted until the phone bill came in. And then it was, who has been calling this random 900 number and it has a $27 charge, (laughs) which felt like, you know, a million dollars to like an eight-year-old. Yeah, that's a couple piggy banks worth of coins in there. With 900 numbers, there were lots of ways to rack up your phone bill. For instance, there was a TV station called The Box that was basically a jukebox for music videos. You'd call a 900 number and request a video for $2 a song. One listener remembers calling it a lot. You'd be super pumped because you'd call that number and see your request pop up on the television. $2 a song, you don't really even think about it as a teenager. And then a month later, you know, you're, you're getting uh, your butt kicked by your parents for ringing up the phone bill with 900 number of calls. Another listener remembers hearing from one of these angry parents. Back in the early 1990s, I was an elementary teacher in Southern California. And one day the father of a fifth grade boy came in very angry, very upset. His son had racked up almost $400 in 900 number charges. That night after I got home, I called the number and I was greeted with a pre-recorded message of this very breathy woman telling the story of, today I went to a new restaurant and I saw a waitress with the most beautiful eyes. 
I wasn't in her section, but I watched her all through my lunch. I listened for four minutes and then hung up. I can see how that very quickly could have amounted to $400 for this child. As the phone bills got higher and higher, the phone companies got flooded with calls from angry customers. The phone companies were tired of getting the calls from the wives or the husbands about, oh, what is this charge on my telephone bill of $22? My son Jimmy would never do that. Well, Jimmy did and the husband did. Soon enough, the Federal Communications Commission stepped in. As it would happen, the FCC and the FTC came in and they made rules. The Consumer Protection Act, which is still in effect, that started in 1993. And that was really invented to stop the abuse of 900 numbers. And an industry that was totally unregulated suddenly became totally overregulated to the point where the consumer could call in and request a chargeback. A chargeback is where you dispute a charge on your card. If it's accepted, the money is then refunded back to your account. They had to show no proof whatsoever to get the charge back. We would have people call us and say, oh, my cat dialed the number. (coughs) Or stupid things like this that you know just could not possibly have been true. And they would get a charge back and they were essentially stealing. So you think you made all this money on all these calls until nobody was paying for the calls. And the carriers didn't want anything to do with it. The carriers just said, This is more trouble than it's worth. We never want to deal with this again. So that's what shut down the 900 numbers. Of course, not everyone who requested a chargeback was a scammer. Because while plenty of these lines were legitimate, others were pretty questionable. There were some programs that would guarantee you a place in a major motion picture if you called the 900 number. And that was very deceiving because what they would offer you is a chance to be in a stadium when an airplane flyover would occur and they'd take your picture. So you got your face in a movie in the middle of a huge crowd of people who also got duped. Did they deliver what they said? Yes, but it wasn't really what the consumer thought they were going to get. Other deceptions had more serious consequences. Call the Psychic Hotline at 1-900-535-LIVE and talk one-on-one with an authentic psychic astrologer. The Psychic Hotline is not a computer, not a tape. You'll get good advice about love and relationships, romance, even money in your career. With the psychic clients, one of the reasons they were shut down was they were really appealing to a demographic that didn't have the money to do this because they were promised that they were going to make a lot of money and that they were going to win the lottery and they were going to find a rich husband. They're kind of preying on people's vulnerabilities when they need money. Good luck in money and love could be just a phone call away. $3 per minute must be 18 for entertainment only unlimited talk time. Because of this, psychic lines tended to have the most chargebacks of all. Chargebacks became the thing that brought the industry down because, especially on programs like psychics, people would develop problems with psychic calls and they would call them to the point where they couldn't pay their bill. The psychic lines had that addictive quality to them. I don't know what to do today until I know what's going to happen, so I have to call my psychic and she'll tell me if my boyfriend's cheating on me or if I'm going to make a lot of money today, and there was a lot of that. Shady practices, deceptive advertising, addictive qualities, these all played a part in fracturing the 900 number business. But what ultimately brought the industry to its knees was the internet. Because the internet could do things that a phone number never could. A very important part of dating is the physical attraction. And, you know, that's usually why you go up and talk to somebody, right? We didn't have that on the phone. The internet, you were able to show a picture. And that's a pretty big part of the dating process. So the internet is really what killed the industry. 
And there was another problem that made 900 numbers totally incompatible with the modern age. One of the negatives of 900 was they were only accessible from landline phones. They never in the United States and Canada made them accessible from mobile phones. Today, 900 numbers are totally defunct in the U.S. They don't exist in the United States at all. That all ended about six years ago. But they do still exist in Canada. They exist in Europe. But, you know, they're a small part of what they once were. So that was the end of 900 numbers. Except it wasn't. Not quite. Because although most 900 numbers went defunct over two decades ago, something bizarre is going on. In the countries where they're still available, some of those old numbers are still getting calls. I also own some of my own phone lines, so I still get residuals on those. And these lines haven't been advertised in years. But how do people know about them? The answer lies hidden in the backs of closets and attics across the country. We always used to say that no man ever throws away his favorite magazine. So the magazine that we threw under the bed or whatever, you could pull out five years later and the numbers are still going to be in there that he could call. Remember the good old days when you used to call me? Well, I know you thought those days were gone, but they're not. I'm still here. Call me. And that got me thinking. Would the Crip Keeper hotline, the one that had Dallas so spooked all those years ago, still work? We had to give it a try. This is so exciting. Okay, here we go. 900-246-CRYPT. Okay, so we got C-R-Y-P-T. The service you are attempting to use has been restricted or is unavailable. Please contact customer care for assistance. Oh. Yeah, that's too bad. I wish they left personalized death messages behind. You know, the Hulk Hogan one was like, oh, sorry, brother, this line's no longer available. This is going to be the last message from the macho man. Yeah, there could have been a much better, cooler way. Yeah, why not? Well, the 900 number didn't work. So we decided to go directly to the source. Hello, boils and ghouls. It's your old pal, John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> and in tonight's terror tale, I get interviewed by a good fiend of mine, Dallas. <laughs> Take it away, Dallas, but be careful what you ask for. You may get it. <laughs> How you doing, Dallas? I'm doing all right. Uh, this is so exciting for me. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm curious, what came first? Did you find the voice first? Or did you see the creature first and pair that? And was there a journey to find that voice or did it just pop out of you? Oh, it totally just popped out of me right there in Kevin's studio. When they wanted to find somebody to play the Crypt Keeper, I got to go down to Kevin Yeager's studio. Kevin was the creature maker who made the Crypt Keeper also, you know, design Freddy and Chucky and all this great stuff. Oh. And then when I saw the Crypt Keeper and I saw how he had, you know, holes in his throat and rotting teeth... I started doing this voice and immediately he started shaking his head like, yeah, yeah, you know, point, pointing <laughs> at me, you know, like that. And I, I started laughing because he was so animated, which kind of like was something that I infused into the character immediately. You know, the character that laughs at his own jokes and it stuck. Tales from the Crypt ran from 1989 to 1996. And during that time, the Crypt Keeper was everywhere. He dipped his decomposing toes into hip-hop. This is the Keeper, for I have a tasty treat. Inviting you all to a feast. Only the best of fiends can come. We'll have skeletons of fun. So come on down to... He had a kid's animated series. I could go back to New York City. I hear they're in the middle of another slime wave. 
He even had his own holiday album titled Have Yourself a Scary Little Christmas. On the second day of Christmas, my cool love gave to me two murderous shoves and a trip to the mortuary. And of course, he had his 900 number, the one Dallas and I tried and failed to call. But what was special about his 900 number was that it was a trivia challenge. So call 1-900-246-CRIPT for a ghoulish game that's sure to be a cut above the rest. On that 900 number, one of the advertised prizes was meeting the Crypt Keeper in the flesh. Do you remember <laughs> meeting anyone from that? <laughs> meeting the Crypt Keeper in the rotting flesh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they may have gotten to go down to Kevin Yeager's studio and seen the puppet or something. I mean, I remember people winning phone calls from the Crypt Keeper or their voicemail being done by the Crypt Keeper, that kind of thing, you know. For John, the 900 number has become just another part of the Crypt Keeper's legacy. The Crypt Keeper, it's everywhere. I mean, I see it on clothes. I see it on sports jerseys. I see it on hats. I've seen, you know, the little figurines. And I'm really honored to be a part of that. People consider me to be the Crypt Keeper, which, you know, obviously I'm not. But it's the part of the Crypt Keeper they can actually talk to face to face. The fact that I can go to conventions and sign autographs and have a following and people that I relate to as my own kind of horror not only fans, but friends, you know that it, it made an impression when people come up to you and show you their Crypt Keeper tattoos. What I love about voice acting is when you can kind of encompass a character, and even now, as a 42-year-old, you just make me melt, like, internally when you jump into any of that. Oh, that's so nice of you to say I'm only 42 years old. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, if young Dallas knew that one day he would actually talk to the Crypt Keeper, how do you think he'd react? Oh, if young Dallas one day thought that he was going to talk to the Crypt Keeper when he was older, he would most certainly think that he must be dead because the Crypt Keeper is dead. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and that older Dallas must also look like another version of the Crypt Keeper, but maybe not as funny. <laughs> so... <laughs> Twenty Thousand Hertz is produced out of the sound design studios of DeFacto Sound. For some bizarre and funny audio memes, go subscribe to DeFacto Sound on YouTube. This episode was written by Doug Fraser. It was story edited by Andrew Anderson and Casey Emerling, with help from Grace East. It was sound designed and mixed by Justin Hollis, with original music by Wesley Slover. Thanks to our guests Bob Bentz, David Wood, and John Kassir. These days, John appears at lots of horror conventions. To find out where he's going next, follow him on Facebook and Twitter. John's also on Cameo, so if you want a custom video from the Crypt Keeper himself, now's your chance. <laughs> a big thanks goes out to all of our listeners who left us voice messages about this topic. That's Adam, Brendan, Brian, Clinton, David, Jason, Meredy, Matt, and Morgan. Also, a quick heads up. If you try to call the number that's in the title of this episode, you'll get an error message. Remember, 900 numbers don't work with U.S. cell phones. And even if you have a landline, we'd rather not charge you $3.99 a minute just to hear a goofy message from us. Finally, Doug has his own podcast called Curious State, where offbeat questions lead to unforgettable answers. Questions like, could we have domesticated a T-Rex? What's the point of regret? Haven't all the possible songs been written by now? To find out, subscribe to Curious State right here in your podcast player. Thanks for listening. 